I will talk about, as I already said, the role of China in the energy sector. Um, and I'm besides analyzing AIRB, I'm also focusing on the Belt and Road Initiative. Most of you most probably have heard about that. So I will embed the energy investments in the whole framework of the Belt and Road Initiative, BRI. This is the acronym um, because we have to see the whole investments in the framework of the BCIM, so the Bangladesh, China, India, Myanmar um, economic corridor. So I will give you a very short overview on the energy investment. I think you heard in the previous sessions a lot already. So I really only will focus on the Chinese energy investments and then uh, give you a short overview on the newest developments. And then we'll have a short, um, yeah, short uh, overview on the future challenges. Um, so we start, wait. Um, the whole um, Belt and Road Initiative, or here it's with this old name, One Belt, One Road, um, Ida Ilu in Chinese. The whole initiative is a kind of new uh, Chinese diplomacy, strategic diplomacy, which tries to do both th two things, uh, tries to integrate in the international environment, economic environment, and also a law environment for international trade, um, but also try to change uh, this whole global system from within. And the usual, um, one of the usual instruments is to build up these strategic uh, partnerships by MOUs, by having these countries signing memorandum of understanding on, and on the right slide, sorry, it's in German, the headline, it means uh, BRI uh, MOUs uh, globally. Uh, so there you can see um, that there currently, there are now 139 MOUs, um, which was um, signed from 2014 until today. And the peak was in 2018. The latest country which joins this year was Congo. Um, but <laughs> also one pattern is that if you deal with China, many things are very, very much not transparent. So if you want to have a look into these MOUs, out of these nearly 140 MOUs, you only can see three. That's all. Um, and Bangladesh, um, you can see clearly is, uh, or I just go back again, is, is um, part of both, part of the, the, the land corridor and also the maritime corridor. Um, the 2,800 kilometer long Bangladesh, China, India, Myanmar economic corridor is one of the proposed six corridors. And we always have to keep in mind this whole BRI is um, just a slogan. It's not a program, but it has more or less $1 trillion or more um, to invest, but it's not, there's not a written plan for projects or whatsoever. So it's more or less a push, a, a, a call to the international community to collaborate with China on infrastructure, but also on other things. Um, the, the specific Bangladesh, um, China, Myanmar corridor is always overshadowed by the um, China India tension, probably you know. So, and that's the reason why, um, because India is not part of the uh, Belt and Road Initiative and did not sign a, uh, an MOU up to now. Um, and that's the reason why, why India is always um, um, pointing to the so called Kunming uh, initiative, which was um, happened in 1999, where more than 100 officials from India and China 
met and uh, also from Bangladesh and Myanmar. And so at that time already, so before the BRI was announced in 2013, 13, uh, bef uh, there they already agreed on a very close economic uh, cooperation. So um, it was in limbo, so to say, if um, India and, and Bangladesh are still on the map of the BRI and was the second uh, BRI forum in 2019, it was reiterated um, that there is a willingness to strongly cooperate um, economically and um, heading for more, uh, especially energy investment cooperation. The whole vision of the BRI is to create an alternative uh, globalization, alternative to the fossil-based US-dominated um, globalization, um, which is a good thing, I would say. But we also have to keep in mind that the BRI also was created to um, reduce the overcapacities in the energy market, in especially in the coal for the coal industry, so to um, um, also to to push more for the state-owned enterprises in China to go out and invest in other countries. Wait, I how to ah okay. So in this slide, um, which is a very interesting slide, I think uh, I will explain in a minute. Um, it's from a recent st uh, study from Boston University, and there you can see in the first column, uh, column um, here, you see that, um, that from 2014 to 2017, 91% of the energy sector syndicated loans um, from the six major banks uh, in China, so the two policy banks and the four commercial banks, um, was made um, for fossil fuels. And in the second column, you also can see that 61%, so the dark blue and the lighter blue, uh, was made in, in fossil fuel investments. And on the third column, you, you can see that in the specific Silk Road Fund, so is SRF, uh, which was specifically uh, created for the Belt and Road, um, there it's even 93% investments in fossil fuels. I will not go through the whole um, slide, but I think it's very clear that there is a heavy willingness uh, to invest in, in fossil fuels along the Belt and Road. Um, in 2015, the very first action plan for the Belt and Road was created, which was um, propagating kind of five main realms where China will be engaged in this framework of the Belt and Road. And there you can see uh, the second one is infrastructure connectivity, which is uh, which includes hard and so-called soft infrastructure, meaning uh, trade deals um, and signing, for example, regulatory uh, standards and so on. Um, infrastructure connectivity, as I said, as one part of the Belt and Road. Um, meant for the China, Bangladesh, mainly coal investments. And this is a quite old chart, but I think um, it was made clear. Uh, here you can see Bangladesh on the seventh position of the coal and fired power projects invested by China. But in a more recent um, table here on the right side, you can see that Bangladesh is also among the top 10 uh, uh, locations for Chinese coal fire power plant investment. I will jump very quickly through the time 2018 until today because so many things changed. So we start out with this very first um, yeah, uh, power sector master plan 2018 in Bangladesh, which already had planned 34 coal power plants for Bangladesh. So this was a kind of inviting in China into Bangladesh to build um, coal power 
power plants. So you always have to keep in mind it needs both sides, China and Bangladesh, to push for these coal power plants. Um, out of these uh, 34, there have been uh, only um, 13 financed, financed or yeah, more or less a half, uh, 13 financed by China. Um, but in last year, there were only um, eight um, left with binding agreements to China and four very shortly after cancelled. And then you see a kind of cascade of cancelling of coal power, plant, power plants. Um, in February 21, uh, the, the Chinese embassy sent a letter to the Bangladesh Ministry of Finance and declared that the Chinese side will no longer consider projects with um, high energy consumption, such as coal mining and coal fire power plants uh, for Bangladesh. So um, we saw the cancellation of five projects, so only um, four uh, were um, retained. And then in June 21, um, the state minister, Bangladesh State Minister for Power, Energy and Mineral Resources, Nazrul Hamid, has dropped 10 other power plants uh, with a total generation of 8,451 megawatts. And among them was the Patuakali power plant. And this slide, which is from uh, Hassan Mehedi, I guess, <laughs> there you see it's then it would be only six uh, power plant, coal fire power plants left uh, in the portfolio of the Chinese investments in Bangladesh. Um, but our new GSEL data have revealed that there are much more expansion plans together, altogether 12 projects with a capacity of 16,350 megawatt. I will not go into detail here because it's too new and we really have to double check the numbers. But in any case, uh, I think everybody heard that uh, just um, one month ago in September on the United Nations General Assembly, uh, the Chinese President Xi Jinping announced that China will stop building coal fire power plants abroad. So what this means for Bangladesh, which EPC contracts still can be cancelled and so on, um, all the, the different researchers and, and CSOs are still um, trying to, to get a clear picture on that. Um, what must be clear and what we can also see from other um, countries like Philippines who are stepping out, cancel uh, more than half of the plant, new coal power, power plants, we can see a drift to gas, strong um, gasification or coal to gas um, power plants, uh, which will occupy all of us in the future. Um, so here you can see uh, the oil and gas projects, ongoing oil and gas projects in uh, Bangladesh, financed by China, also charted by um, Bangladesh Working Group on External Debt. And we can see that only seven out of 19 are under construction. So that would mean that a very strong advocacy is needed if we would like to stop these um, projects to go on. Overall, the, the energy mix uh, in Bangladesh, uh, we can see um, that uh, in operation, there is uh, already a, a strong uh, dominance of fossil gas, um, nearly the same amount as coal. It's uh, the bright red and dark red um, uh, uh, circle here. Um, and the construction uh, and pipeline also shows massive coal investment. But as um, we just heard, uh, many have been shelved now. So I think um, if we would do an, a, a new chart, there will be most probably uh, new proportional changes in this um, mixture. So let me just... Um, zoom into who is 
um, building these um, these um, power plants in Bangladesh and um, who is investing. So we call them expansionists from uh, our new global coal exit list data set. You can see here uh, six main companies active in Bangladesh. Um, CMC is the market leader. He, this company designs more or less 60% of China's uh, fossil plants. Norinco also produces weapons um, and uh, processes minerals and power China is doing more or less everything, finances, construction, equipment, yeah, developing and so on. So the majority of these companies are state owned, 60% out of uh, 100. Uh, or 60% to 100. So sometimes it's um, it's only state-owned enterprises. The majorities are active in engineering and services um, and other um, sectors, as you see here beneath. The funding mainly comes from the two big policy banks, the China Export-Import uh, Bank and the China Development Bank, as well as from the four uh, the so-called big four, the, the big commercial banks from uh, like ICBC in China. We hardly uh, found any financing for coal in Bangladesh in general. So Power China, who are the who are the main investors? For example, just zoom into Power China. Um, for, as I said, uh, it's mainly the Chinese banks. And here for Power China, we see that number one is the ICBC, the Industrial Commercial Bank of China, um, but also foreign investors like BlackRock and Vanguard, who are number nine on the list in uh, Power China, but they are also globally the biggest investor in coal companies. So if you want to know more on foreign investors in Chinese coal, we just published an article on China Dialogue and can send to you if you are interested. Um, this is my last slide and I would just like to give a very, yeah, kind of analytic outlook for what um, is important to strategize in, in Bangladesh, especially in the China-Bangladesh relationship. And I think for the future and for understanding the whole relationship, you need to look to the domestic factors, but also to the international BRI context. So let me just start with uh, some of the very new developments, which you have to keep in mind if you want to strategize in this um, relationship. The newest product, or, or you have to, yeah, first of all, you have to think of China now in a campaign no, mode. China is in a political campaign mode under the new um, administration of Xi Jinping, which means that we on and off get new campaigns which are regulating the whole economic and political uh, landscape inside China. And the newest <clears throat> campaign is so to say the common prosperity campaign, which was launched in September. So last month, months, and it's kind of redefining the Chinese development strategy. It tackles the income disparity um, and wants to eliminate so-called unreasonable incomes. So it aims to force or to urge rich companies to donate to the people, to donate also to BRI countries. Secondly, you see um, a campaign to smash and rectify illegal social organizations. So uh, the, the gray, so to say, gray space for social um, organizations inside China, but also um, social organizations active, for example, in Bangladesh or other BRI countries is shrinking rapidly. Um, thirdly, or here it's secondly, um, we see a, a very strong anti-monopoly move inside China. We, we, everybody of you probably heard of the collapse of Evergrande, the, the biggest um, real estate company in China, but also the An Group. There um, are um, 
new financial regulations which uh, have stricter or 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 uh, ask these um, companies to stricter comply to global listings um, and also to um, hinder monopolies in China. So these are kind of yeah good and bad developments. And then we look to the international side of the development. What does that mean for Bangladesh? Um, so I think this train the trainer course is really right in time because uh, for the future we really have to look watch out and really have to be very careful let me just name three issues um so a new buzzword is the high quality infrastructure which should be um should be one of the main aims of the so-called bri 2.0, which was starting two years ago, uh, but which, which is fleshed out now more clearly with this announcement of uh, Xi Jinping. So they really would like to invest in, in sustainable infrastructure. Um, but if you do not have a strong independent uh, civil society, not inside China and not outside China and not in Bangladesh, it's very difficult to really monitor what is high quality infrastructure and you need to monitor because otherwise it's only a buzzword. Secondly, there is the rise of hidden depth um, now in this kind of BRI 2.0, the new BRI, which uh, was said to avoid depth uh, because there was a strong critique so today, nearly 70% of Chinese overseas lending is now directed to state-owned banks, special purpose vehicles, uh, private sector institutions in recipient countries. So these steps, for the most part, do not appear on their government balance sheets. So they are kind of hidden. So also this needs a very strong um, civil society, independent civil society and, and researchers to be monitored. And finally, um, the vice premier, Chinese vice premier just two days ago stressed that the Belt and Road Energy Corporation, especially also with Bangladesh will be uh, focusing on sustainable energy. So this gives us a very strong leverage to fight for, for example, the early retirement of fossil fuel projects, be it coal, gas, or oil in Bangladesh. That's all from my side. Thank you very much for listening. And I'm willing to answer your questions if there are any. Thank you, Matt, uh, for giving your more level insights on Chinese investments in the energy sector of Bangladesh. So that we will go ahead and take some, push, uh, some time for questions. Have you any questions? I can't see any hand. So. <laughs> Jerin, do you know you don't have any question? Yeah. Uh, it looks like uh, we have a question. Yeah. Not on China, but also other influential countries who are committed to reduce investment in fossil fuel, but they are conflicting with each other in several regions. So is it possible to stop the investments? To what? To stop the investments? Yeah. Um, I think the time is uh, good now uh, because we will have the, the COP26 just before of us. And um, we can stop the obvious investment, as I said, but there will be so many hidden investments who will be in financial intermediaries or other products um, that we really have to watch out um, the traveling of the money. And this will be very difficult. And I think the main uh, power will be with the recipient countries, with Bangladesh itself, with the government. So if the government it, it needs to um, 
the movement, the first step needs to come for, from, yeah, from the countries itself, from the recipient countries of the investments. Okay, it looks like you have it. Uh, I hope this answered your question. Thank you, Shakila Rahman. No more questions from Jerin. Uh, I can see Shakibul, Urmi, uh -huh. Sabrina. Mm. No question? I think I didn't understood all or couldn't I understand anything. I, I would like to ask the students, what do you want to do in the future? What is your, why are you here in this course? Yeah, you, I think you can, uh, Nora, you can ask na by name. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Veta, Veta, because okay. uh, I think they are feeling shy. Yeah. Yeah, so I ask uh, Munira. Munira, Damam Memi. Munira. She's not there. Yeah. Okay, then the second one. Anybody else? Um, perhaps Urmi Jahan Tani? Urmi Jahan Turniapu, Anut Kore Katavalin? Apu Katsen? I want to show you. Boy, I think. Hey, I the hesitation because Can I say, say something? Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, by this course, uh, I want to increase my knowledge about energy sector, and uh, by gaining knowledge, I I like to apply my whole knowledge in energy sector to reduce investment in fossil fuels and. <clears throat> In Bangladesh, uh, we spent a lot of money uh, in spoil because of our planning. So I want to, I want to uh, use our whole resource in uh, efficiency and increase consciousness in general mass people. Thanks. Very interesting. Anybody of you believes that Bangladesh can become 100% renewable as an electric, electricity power source? Sansida? Your question is, what do you think? Do you think that Bangladesh is going to be able to do we see that uh, we see that uh, many influential countries conflicting uh, with with each other in various region, regions like uh, South China Sea, Bay of Bengal, and other countries for fossil fuels. They are investing more and more money in this sector, and whole world depend on these countries' decisions. So, they influence over our country because of political leakage. So when we are uh, not <coughs> uh, uh, not um, light government, so how can we uh, how can we detach from these countries? How can we take independent decisions to uh, invest in renewable energy. So I can't think, I can't uh, think that 100% renewable energy in Bangladesh is possible. Mm. Yeah. Uh, uh, raise his hand. Please unmute and ask your question. Uh, I would like to answer ma'am's question. Uh, Yes, I do. Uh, I do believe that Bangladesh can 
uh, can be capable uh, capable of producing 100% uh, uh, power uh, with renewable sources now but, uh, but it it may be a time consuming procedure or uh, it may take a long time but i do believe that bangladesh can uh, do this because we can see in many rural areas or in many villages in our country that many villages can um, are produce uh, producing their electricity from uh, uh, solar panel solar uh, so, uh, solar systems so uh, why not uh, why not the system uh, in whole country if we can uh, spread the system in our whole country by the help of government world world bank and and uh, from the country as uh, other countries as a whole then uh, then it is very possible that we can spread the renewable sources almost 100% in our country but it it can take time as we are not uh, fully uh, conscious or dedicated to renewable energy in our country yet but if we want uh, want to do that uh, do that we can do that thank you great right. thank you very much for the answer um i think one thing must be clear if you start now a new gas power plant or, or lng it will be there for the next 50 years or 40 years so um yeah i i think it's i really enjoyed the answers uh, so the one the first uh, answer more or less pointed us to the the fact that you need first movers uh, countries who first move in this direction and then bangladesh um with the help of um financial support of the international um multilateral uh, in, uh, um, development banks uh, can move in this direction, I think. Um, but uh, on the same, um, at the same time, you really need to um, try to early retire all the fossils which are there already in, in Bangladesh. Um, and this is, I think, this for this purpose, this course is really good to have it to to rely on you as a new generation and, and young activists who are educated to do this thank you very much for this somebody asked if you can get the slides no problem anyone i can yeah, I can only add that uh, you are you will get the whole recording. So so the the slides that will be there. I think Urmi or or Sabrina, someone Yo, started I, talking. Mr. Enamul Karim raises his hand. Yeah, Enamul, please. Hello. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you don't need to ask that. If we cannot okay. hear, we'll we'll tell you that. <laughs> Okay. okay. Thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, I agree with the uh, uh, earlier speakers about uh, the <clears throat> about if we could, if Bangladesh could achieve hundred uh, percent renewable energy. Uh, I would like to add some points to that. Uh, first of all, I think uh, I think most of the time our government accuses uh, the resource availability or um, lack of efficient uh, workforce or. Uh, funding or lack of funding for transition these re these reasons uh, to avoid to shift uh, you know, towards uh, renewable energy mm. but i think it's possible if we have um, if we have proper uh, policy and legislation towards a better re renewable energy uh, for the future if government uh, wants to uh, as um, as uh, an uh, as a the earlier speaker said that uh, the rural areas of Bangladesh is uh, all, already having uh, solar electric electricity uh, in all, almost all of the regions where uh, our um, transmission transmission lines uh, has not re reached yet. Uh, in those uh, like those regions, whole country can have uh, electricity except for uh, some um, some industrial purposes. For the industrial purposes, we can. Uh, we can use uh, some other uh, technologies for electricity, but uh, we can uh, almost we can achieve almost 90 to uh, 95 percent of renewable uh, energy for uh, for the uh, municipal uh, for the city areas, town areas, or the uh, residential areas. Uh, so I think uh, with proper policy and legislation and a systematic proper procedure with uh, uh, 
uh, with um, with a transparent system of governance, we can achieve uh, renewable uh, renewable energy in our future. Thank you. Thank Very you. Very interesting. Yeah. Sorry. Pritsti. No, no, nothing. Uh, yeah. I Amar Mone Hoche Kunaga Sabrina, Otoba, Tarin, Bamunida, Kyogen Hatu Chokosido, Maikon Kurzen. Munida or Kurzen. Kunoi Amiti Buldekatilam, Sanjida. Uh, the question chat box hmm. uh, I, I would yeah. like to pose perhaps the last question. Um, if anybody of you are in contact with Chinese colleagues, do you, anybody of you know Chinese, even speak Chinese or ever have been in China? Karo ki China kono China pore ra kono bondhu ache kingba China bolte Chinese bhasha bolte paro kingba China kono din gye chho amon ki kewa ache na na kao to bolte paro in amul bolse no ma'am onna keu okay that's very yeah. sad <laughs> that's very sad yeah yeah. I, I think you need to know hmm. your neighbor. <laughs> yeah, uh, but but you know, uh, Nora, uh, in in especially South Asia, the most of the people has their eyes on the western, uh, you know, direction, not to the eastern direction. Mm, sometimes I feel very pity that uh, we do not know enough about even Burma. Mm. Uh, and you know we visited maybe maybe 100 times or more to india but mm. never to never to myanmar that's bad but, but yeah but that that's one of our closest uh, you know neighbor neighboring country mm. uh, some of us visited several times to nepal uh, mm. which you you can go through only you know mm, uh, most easiest easiest ways to go through flight. I know I did that in eighty four. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so that's that's sometimes I feel very bad that uh, even uh, me I I didn't I haven't visited uh, you know Myanmar any time in my life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's that's not only you know not only uh, to see the western but also the the governance uh, mechanism the governance of the country. Mm. is sometimes make you, you know, scared. Mm. Mm. You mean China or you mean... Yeah, Myanmar? China, China, Myanmar, Myanmar, both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I really understand. Um, but still, I mean, th there's a government and there are the people. And mm -mm. I really believe in strong people's ties. So these young students here listening to our talk, they should try mm. to to get a connection um although today i think it's much more difficult much more <laughs> difficult than five years ago and yeah yeah every day it's, it's going to be more difficult in all over the world mm. that's the i think i think a decade of uh, popularism uh means cheap popularism in the politics and uh, autocratic governance of autocratic governments, governments are taking place in many countries all over the Asia. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, so if there are not more yeah. questions because we have the next meeting in 10 minutes. Um, yeah, so I, yeah, I would I, I recommend, wait, I, there is one study I really would recommend you to, uh, if you want to know more on Belt and Road and Finances, uh, it's uh, called Banking, um, on Belt and Road, and this is really a very recent and very important uh, publication. I can, yeah, uh, perhaps Mehdi, you can post later in the chat. Um, I don't yeah. have it now, 
But thank you very much for listening. And I hope um, yeah, my input helped a bit to understand what's going on between China and Bangladesh and the energy sector. Um, just, yeah, that's all from my side. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.